Alright guys, today's episode, should a Christian read the book of Enoch? A lot of people have been asking me about the book of Enoch, is it right or wrong to read it? Should you read it as a Christian? Is it an open door for demons? Why is it not part of the Bible? And so on and so forth. And in today's episode, I'm planning to share what I know about the book of Enoch. And I will let you know something very interesting. I have never read the book of Enoch. It's not because it's an open door. I don't think that demons can enter through that book. I think that it's not in the canonical Bible for a reason. Uh, But I think that if you yourself as a Christian wants to read it, make sure that you understand why you're reading it. One of the most important things that I can say about the book of Enoch or any books outside of scripture is this secret. Knowing facts about the enemy does not give you more authority over him. We don't grow in our authority over demons because we know where they came from. We don't know, we don't grow in our authority over demons because we know their name. We don't grow in our authority over demons because we know how they came into existence. Okay, all these things are knowledge. But we don't cast demons out by the power of knowledge, but the power in the name of Jesus. In fact, we don't grow in our authority at all. We grow in our understanding of our authority because all authority in heaven and on earth has already been invested in the name of Jesus. That authority does not grow or reduce, depending on you or me. The name of Jesus and the power therein is the same, irrespective of who is using it. There is power in the name of Jesus because it's the name that is above every other name. So if you are growing in deliverance ministry or you're interested in deliverance ministry or you're currently in the ministry of deliverance and you're like, oh, I think I want to read the book of Enoch to understand the origin of Nephilim, where the demons came from, and, you know, all that kind of stuff. That's good. That's okay. If you want to do that, do that. It's not going to give you uh, extra power or authority, though, because to grow in your understanding of your authority, you need to understand your own identity in Christ. It is in Him we live, move, and have our being. Growing in your understanding of identity is equal to growing in your understanding of your authority. And to understand your identity, you have to understand his identity because everything that we have comes from him. And it is through him that we operate in power and authority. And so I encourage you, if you want to grow or grow in your understanding of your authority or, or, you know, get more understanding and, 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 and so on and so forth, I encourage you to get to know Jesus. Grow in your relationship with him, not in your knowledge of demons. Having knowledge about demons is okay, but it's not the deal breaker. It's not, Jesus never once complained about his disciples not having enough knowledge. He complained about his disciples not having enough faith. And knowledge and faith are not the same thing. So having knowledge and knowing facts about the enemy is good. It could be beneficial, but it's not gonna give you an edge in the sense of your authority. That edge comes from Christ and learning more about him and getting to know him and spending time with him. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna read the book of Enoch and then I'm gonna do another episode and let you guys know what I think about it. Now, I don't claim to be some kind of super experienced deliverance minister, but what I do more than anything else is deliverance. And so my ex- and never once have I had a demon say, ha ha, you didn't know my origin and therefore you don't have power to cast me out. I've never had any kind of situation where the knowledge that I can find in the book of Enoch was necessary for me to complete a deliverance. So reading it is extracurricular activity. It doesn't affect your authority in Christ. And as long as you understand that, you're good to go. So your heart's motives has to be in the right place. Secondly, also, I have a saying that anything that fascinates you is what unlocks the key, unlocks the gate to your city. Your city referring to your inner man, your soul. Whatever you are fascinated by is what has the keys to your soul. 
do never allow yourself to be more fascinated with anything else than our creator. Yeah, we can be fascinated by football, we can be fascinated by history, we can be fascinated by these things, but never let any of those fascinations be greater than your fascination with God. Your fascination is a key. And that fascination unlocks, it opens a door to your soul. Listen to me. Your fascination opens a door to your soul and let the door of your soul be open only to Jesus Christ, to God the Creator, and to the Holy Spirit. So make sure that you don't get carried away in your fascination of, oh, the name of this, oh, this demon, oh, he used a bow and arrow, wow, that's so cool, oh, his horse was red, and oh, then we have this other demon, oh, oh this Nephilim, he had a sword, and that sword he slayed to, and oh, his name was R, uh, this name, and this, wow, it's so cool, and suddenly you become kind of fascinated with, with this mystics, mysticism and mythology, and it almost becomes like, you're just playing Dungeons and Dragons at this point, okay? So never allow your fascination with these things to be the leading reason why you want to read it. Also, don't let it be because you're hungering and thirsting for more power or authority. Those two motives are wrong. So what is the Book of Enoch? The Book of Enoch is an ancient text that was discovered among the Dead Sea Scrolls. It is not part of the canonical Bible, but offers a glimpse into the cosmology and mythology of the ancient world. The book explains that Enoch was taken up to heaven and shown divine mysteries. He encounters angels and spiritual beings and learns of their role in the universe. The reason why many people today are intrigued by it is because of its description of the Nephilim, a race of giants, the offspring of fallen angels and human women. This is referenced in Genesis chapter 6. These beings wreaked havoc on the earth, leading to God's intervention in the form of the flood. The message of Enoch was one of obedience to God, and its theme of supernatural history, as well as its mystical nature, still captivates readers today. And that is why many people want to read about it. So it's okay if you want to read it, as long as your heart's posture towards it is correct. As for me, I haven't read it before, but for the sake of this series, I will make one more episode. I'm going to read the book of Enoch, and then I'm going to post a video later on, maybe next week, if I can finish it before then, or in a couple of weeks, where I will share with you what I learned, and if I think it's necessary or important for you to read the book of Enoch. God bless you. I hope you learned something, and I'll see you soon again.